Well, what I'm going to do now is bring Paul Michael Keitel in from Schindler's Attorneys, who's um, he's no stranger to Fields of Green for All in the Docker Couple, but he's certainly a stranger to the Hotbox Show. Yeah. Yeah, 134 episodes later, and Paul Michael is visiting us in lockdown in uh, Santon somewhere. Good evening, Paul Michael. Hi, everybody. Yo, it's hey. good to see you, man. Oh, hey. I think I think it took the stress of lockdown breaking my mind for me to agree to come onto the hot box show. <laughs> okay, well. Also, we, you didn't have to come and be on the actual couch. <laughs> yeah, ba baby steps here. We'll we'll get you on the couch at some point, but that means that then you know there's all of these COVID. I mean, c-word joints oh. running around. We all we don't know what to do about passing joints anymore. No, no, we've got alcohol wipes <laughs> for the bun. We got small. We can roll our own. You put saliva on the paper, don't you know? Big time. Yeah, yeah. but we, watch with the alcohol because when you dope, you also put saliva on the bottle. Oh, hey, look, we could go on and add it for an item. Uh, <laughs> Earl Lewis is watching. My old friend Earl, hello, Brew, Marco Meyer, the Full Spectrum family. There's a whole bunch of people from around the world tonight. They are. PM, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you got the, you've obviously been listening into Anthony's Week. Uh, you concur yeah. with most of it. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about it, but first of all, th we've got an, e a, 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 an inbox full of people that are quite jumpy about all of this because they see it as um, just the word scheduling. They don't like the word scheduling, but they don't read the Gazette and they don't go into the rabbit hole of it. And the bottom line is, this is all the, the Medicines Act that has been going through this week. So. Could you explain to us what THC is doing in the Medicines Act and how everything this week will affect us going forward with THC? Because THC is, we've got a fan club full of THC tonight, you do understand. Oh. All right, well, the Medicines Act, as you know, only deals with medicines. The, the, our, our biggest problem to date has been this um, Sneaky Drugs Act. So what the Medicines Act has now done, you, you'll recall, because we've gone through all of this, that the Medicines Act always referred to dronabinol. Now, dronabinol was a very specific class of THC, wasn't it? Put into a little bottle that, I think if you go back in the history, South Africa, well, South Africa as the apartheid government used to produce a lot of it and ship it overseas, but um, not allow us to use that. Anyway, dronabinol was Schedule 6, which was an acknowledgement that in certain formulations, cannabis has some medicinal value. Uh, what they've now done is they've deleted the reference to dronabinol and they've replaced it with THC. So all that this is really saying is that um, we are acknowledging that THC in certain forms might have uh, medicinal benefits. So if you can clear all of the red tape and compound it and get it through all of the tests and pass all of the pharmacists and register it with SAPRA, then that's a Schedule 6 medicine. So that's what THC is now doing in the Medicines Act. It has nothing to do with your ability to sit at home and smoke weed in your personal and private space. That's that is untouched by this change to the Medicines Act. And, and the, the fact that they call it THC and not cannabis means that they see it as two completely different things. One's a one's an isolated compound and one's a plant. And does that mean they're not interested in cannabis anymore? So they are not acknowledging cannabis, the whole plant or any part thereof, as a medicine. They're acknowledging one of the active pharmaceutical ingredients out of cannabis as a medicine. So look, I mean it's 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 a step forward for medicine. It doesn't it doesn't get in your way or in the way of your rights to self-medicate with cannabis. Um, what it does get in the way of is your ability to purchase um, the medicine in order to self-medicate. Because, yeah, it, as you all know, there is no cannabis industry proper at this stage. Right. So, <clears throat> the, and do you, what, do you, what do you think the reason is that they dropped it from se Schedule 7 to Schedule 6 in the Medicines Act? What, 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 is, what is their long game on that? No, well, what, they, they didn't actually drop it. What they did was Schedule 7 didn't refer to dronabinol or THC. It referred to what we used to, the Drugs Act reference, cannabis, the whole plant. Oh, oh. They've taken that out because it seems that SARPRA has finally woken up to the fact that they're not going to regulate 
the growing of the cannabis plant, they're going to regulate what you do with it. So what medicines you're going to make out of it and what schedules those medicines fall in. But they technically ought not to be, um, or to have any say over, for example, the growing of industrial hemp, because you can remember this absurdity that we've discussed at length about how SARPRA and the Department of Health are handing out hemp research firm permits for people who want to who want to grow their own cannabis cannabis or nut their own hemp socks. Yeah. And removing that reference from Schedule Seven means that the growing of cannabis is going to possibly be an agricultural concern and have nothing to do with SARPRA. Well. Um the way I see it is it gets a little bit stickier than that because it seems they're taking a lead from America where there's two types of CBD now. One of them is you can ingest and one of them you can't because one of them's from hemp and the other one's from marijuana. Are we going to see that here? No, not, not quite, but, but reasonably close. You know, you said that I've had a week to gather my thoughts around this um, amendments. That's not to say that I know it backwards or understand it fully, but, but to the best of my understanding, um, hemp is hemp. CBD as the active pharmaceutical ingredient, if it's going to fall into any of the schedules in the Medicines Act, will still be regulated by SACRA. So there, there is no CBD other than that which you grow and consume at home that falls outside of, of, of the Medicines Act. I see. So, what I think, what Myrtle and I really, really want to know is, is, it, is all of this going to make all of our jobs a lot easier for THC? Is, there, is this a breakthrough that they've now, it's irrefutable medicine. It cannot not be medicine anymore. Surely that's good. That, that, is, that is good from, a, you know, from breaking the stigma, from starting to acknowledge what is and what we've known for, for decades, despite what government thought. But you've still got this pesky reference in the Drugs Act. Because the Drugs Act still makes cannabis, the whole plant, or any part thereof, illegal. Um, yes, we have the 2018 Constitutional Court judgment, but that doesn't allow you to sell cannabis or cannabis products. Right. So it is indeed a step in the right direction, but until we see a mirror amendment to the Drugs Act or a deletion of a reference in the Drugs Act, um, we've only got half of the puzzle actually completed. Well, we're getting, Fields of Green for All, we're getting a little bit edgy that there is absolutely no public participation. There's, no, there's nothing out there to get our teeth into. It's like whatever they're doing, if they are doing it, they're doing it extremely untransparently, untrans which is, you know, that's their modus operandi. Have you seen anything? Have you heard anything? You, we've all seen that leaked cannabis bill, which is only reactive to the judgment as to whether there's going to be an amendment to the Drugs Act or a standalone bill that actually allows for a cannabis industry. We don't know. Um, there hasn't been much word for government other than the, the tweets of uh, Twitter and Goweni. But um, in terms of the law, they only actually have to invite public participation when they publish something. Um, now, we're all very excited about this um, deadline at the end of the year, but you'll recall that the Constitutional Court judgment didn't say that Parliament needs to create a cannabis industry. It just says that it needs to enable personal and private use. Right. So, there, firstly, if, if, if there's going to be a cannabis industry, it's, it's parliamentary prerogative, for one. And there is no mandate for the cons from the Constitutional Court, and therefore there is no deadline. So, as to the creation of a cannabis industry, they can drag their feet for as long as they like, unless we take them back to court again. Unless we do. Shuddered the thought, but hey, um, we always knew it was going to be a long haul. Ten years down the hatch so far. Well, uh, we, I see that uh, Sacred Seeds is asking, they're saying but the CBD seeds are illegal to buy. So you, you can't grow your own CBD. <laughs> <laughs> the seed story. The what seed about story. Seeds, we need to Paul know Michael. about what seeds. What about seeds? We find a, a really good buddy who has some seeds anyway and is willing to share those with you. But, but yes, the, the trade in cannabis seeds is a sticky one because there's this paradox of having to know somebody who was breaking the law prior to the judgment or then having to break the law in order to enforce your constitutional rights it's absolutely crazy, and 
I don't think it was intended by the Constitutional Court. They just overlooked it. I think if you could go back to the Constitutional Court justices and say, um, how are people supposed to get their hands on seeds to exercise their Constitutional Court rights? Surely they can buy them. They would, they would say, oh, yes, we didn't think of that. Surely you can yeah. buy them. They don't know our industry as much as we do. It's not they're not embedded in it. They don't think about the things like that. The See, small You're saying the bench of nine don't grow. Maybe they don't. <laughs> well, I'm sure they've got a child or a grandchild that does. Well they do now. <laughs> Have you had you you uh your, your luck down with some of your uh, gardening handiwork, I presume, PM? Have you had a, a, a harvest to keep you going? Yeah, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't the most impressive harvest. Last year's was a lot more impressive, but uh, you know, I, I'm slowly potting away at it. I've, I've got uh, some casual CBD in this vape pen of mine, which is uh, right taking away the stress on occasion. So, and I'm good. I'm good. Excellent. Well, it's good to see your face on the hot box. Uh, maybe one day we're going to get you on the couch as well. It'll be. We've got people lining up for the couch. Um, Anthony, I want to come back to you a moment about the edible and inedible CBD stuff. I've got a friend, with, as an activist friend in Mexico, it's her pet subject, is the way that the FDA is messing with CBD now because you're not allowed to eat it if, if it came from the hemp plant because that's an industrial product. Is that here? Does that, any of that, have you heard of any of that in all of the halls that you walk down? Because that's lunacy. Oh, God, chilling. We, we're fighting this one tooth and nail, ongoing with the Department of uh, Health's Food Control Directorate. Um, those guys are the ones who regulate foods in this country, foodstuffs and beverages and cosmetics and disinfectants. Like <laughs> crazy batch of uh, basket of products. But it, it's, a, it's an archaic 1974 law that they minister, and... These guys are, are basically saying they haven't approved CBD as an additive to foods. Therefore, it is illegal to, to have in food or beverages. So they've taken... Mm -mm 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 -mm. Pity. Yeah. What are all the okay. dogs in Santa and gonna do without their anxiety dog biscuits now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who have tons of products sitting in state warehouses cannot get past war, report health um, because food control directorate basically put their foot down and said no, not acceptable. Yeah. So when, when you, inquiries have been made, we've received the most bizarre ones from some of the bureaucrats in that department, like. You know, how dare you put this, this terrible uh, uh, cannabis in, in children's sweets, you know? You, it's okay to the drug attitude. It's okay. And, and nobody there is budging. It is unbelievable. Well, as, Mer as Myrtle said earlier on in the show, the, the, this final push to get something done with Cyril and say, listen, we're in deep shit here. Cannabis can help South Africa. They, they have to just... It's almost as if anything that's in bonded store, they have to go, hey, just bring it in and let's get some money made yeah. and turn over this economy. Something has to give. It's, 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 it's lunacy that people have put so much time and effort into it, and now it's all getting washed down the toilet with a, a quick stroke of a pen. Hectic. Yeah. Jules, can I, can I jump in? Yeah, sure. Paul Michael. You know, it's just, it's just worthwhile remembering that SAPRA is this weird um, entity that is only partially funded by government. Um, their very existence relies on them reaping in all of the various license fees. So they're in this weird hybrid situation where they're supposed to be taking care of the legitimate concerns of people who want quality medicine, but they want to now name absolutely everything medicine in order so that they can collect the license fees and, and put on strict laws and say, you can't sell that until we've licensed it. And that also probably explains the backlog that Anthony is talking about because they've already collected the license fees. The administration fee is sitting in the bank account and they've got no impetus to actually get to the admin of, of licensing all of these things that, uh, that are subject to application. <laughs>